um, I'm Anushka. I'm a software engineer in Google, and I in the in the past I have worked with Amazon as a software engineer, and I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you for inviting me so much, and um, I hope to answer your questions in as much detail as I can. A uh, little about me. Uh, I graduated in 2018 uh, with a degree in electronics from BIT Mesra, but that is the but I soon realized that it was not my area of forte and it wasn't something that I enjoyed. So I soon moved to uh, software engineering in my third year. I started practicing. Uh, I started com uh, doing competitive programming and preparing for software engineering interviews. And yeah, within one year. During my com campus placements, I was hired in Amazon, and I hope that you know I can help you in your preparation in the least. And uh, I'll answer. Uh, there are seven questions, and I'll try to answer them in as much detail as I can. And if you still have any doubts, you can ping me on LinkedIn. My full name is Anushka Gupta, or on Instagram. And yeah, I can resolve your doubts there. Then, so let's get started. The first question is, how would you advise a college second, third year to get prepped for a Google interview? Okay, so this is a very generic question, but um, I mean, um, preparing just for a company, I think is a very, you know, silly idea because it just might happen that it wasn't your day or, you know, you messed up your interviews or something went wrong. And so you should not be focusing all your energy in just getting into Google or like in some so-and-so com company. You should try to crack a software engineering interview in general. And the process is very similar. All of them have maximum emphasis on data structures and algorithms. There will be four or five rounds for them for that, for like three to five rounds for that. And you will be asked a question. If you solve it, great. And if you don't, yeah, too bad. But that is the general strategy they'll all they might also ask you some operating system or data structure uh, sorry operating system or dbms or computer networks or there can be some personality rounds also but just remember that 80 to like 60 to 80 percent of your software engineering interview is a data structure or algorithm especially at your college level so make sure you are very well versed with it it's super important and to get started that is the best place. Go back to your first year when you studied DS and uh, you know algo, and revise all your basic bind research and you know basic sorting algorithms. Understand them, not just memorize them. Understand them. them that why is this the only way to solve it? And you know understand the time complexities for it. And uh, like the number one advice would be don't try to memorize solutions. It will not get you far. Try to understand the reasoning behind it. And then you can get signed, started with any of these sites. Be it CodeChef, you can either go in the competitive programming line and get started with code forces, CodeChef or anything. Or if you're just focused on software engineering interviews, then you can get started from Geeks for Geeks, Lead Code, Interview Bit. I mean, there's an huge number of sites who are offering to do this and but i personally love lead code uh, because you know it's it has a lot of questions and a lo uh, and the forum is really big so you can even post your questions to understand that why did so and so thing happened so yeah choose any site and keep practicing that is the key don't just think that okay before the interview i'll start studying for one month no that's that's almost never going to work because you can't really understand algos so fast so yeah try to create a good base and build up on that and keep practicing and yeah that should do it for google interviews as well and especially if your google interview is coming up um, you can go to lead code and you know choose the google tab and do those questions or if you need a referral or anything you can ping me i can i'm very willing to provide you all a referral so yeah just let me know about that but there's nothing special for a google interview that you need to do it's all practice 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 next question what was the biggest lesson you have learned with regard to your work life um, so the biggest regard is that um, you're not as smart as you think you are in college. Uh, so I used to think that um, <laughs> since I had done everything on my own, since I knew my, uh, you know, I was studying on my own, I used I had this kind of pride and I used to think that, oh, I'm so smart, uh, you know, and everything. 
but so that reality soon smashes when you get into a company because it's not just about you know being smart it's about working as a team that is what matters the most and if you can't work as a team your independent skills won't matter at all you can be an individual contributor but at the end of the day it's the team which delivers so being a team player is just as important which you or guys can learn even in college by taking part in hackathons or building projects together and it's a great way so yeah i mean this has been a huge awakening for me that i can't be an individual contributor always it at the end of the day it boils down to how my team is going to perform so yeah i just try to learn some you know teamsmanship or if that's a word but yeah try to like build things together and not bring each other down in the process so that's been super important okay the next question how different is the work life in amazon and in google <laughs> okay so i think this has been answered really well on google as well or you can find it on quora or literally any of the sites but i think the biggest difference is that amazon um is not really a very so basically google i would say is very very employee friendly we have free food we have a huge number of perks free gym i think everyone knows about these things and uh, yeah it's definitely amazing to have that kind of you know security and to have them right on campus because it takes away a huge amount of distraction which you can actually focus on work in amazon what i loved was the scale at which i was working because obviously amazon is the biggest company right now with the hugest with the biggest customer base so the scale at which i was working the learnings were huge and um, yeah i mean definitely they both have their own perks they both have their own different uh, learnings to give me in both work life and in general but yeah that's mostly the difference from both of them um next question for placements should the focus be solely on competitive coding or do development skills give applicants an upper hand um okay i'll be a little biased here because i didn't really do development as such um what i do believe in though is you need to nail your software engineering interview competitive co- uh, coding is a shortcut to not a shortcut it's actually a very long cut but yeah generally the competitive programmers will be good uh um, you know will be good in some in the software engineering interviews because the syllabus is pretty much the same so definitely competitive programming is a great way to get started it gives you so much idea about the lld it brings it brings the coders together and it's a beautiful community i mean it's an amazing community similarly with development also um you have so much to learn i mean open source is the shells right now but yeah i would say um, they don't the development skills won't really give you an upper hand in your software engineering interviews because companies aren't looking for people who have done, who has done the maximum number of projects they will at the end of the day hire who clears their in uh, interviews right so your yeah, development skills won't really make a huge difference but yes if you have done something out of the box it will show and especially if you're aware of it like don't just put a development skill don't just put a skill in your resume just for the sake of it try to actually learn it understand it be a master of it and only then put it in your resume because if you have put for example that i know gradle and then if the interviewer asks you that question and then you're like mm, i don't know it just shows really bad that you know you put something you put gradle in your interview but uh, in your resume but you couldn't answer a question uh, an answer about it so yeah just make sure that whatever development skills you're thinking of putting in your resume make sure you actually know them and don't just put it for the sake of like you know making your resume fancier uh, but yeah i mean try to make a balance try to figure out a balance between them because both are actually just as important but yeah just from a from a uh, interview point of view or from a placement point of view i would say competitive programming does take a bigger you know chunk of it so yeah the next question is do grades matter when applying to mncs is it okay to be average at academics alongside coding skills um yes average is a very you know vague term i would say maintain a good cgpa don't go below 7.5 because that Uh, most of the companies uh, uh, will allow you to sit after 7.5 that won't be an issue but yeah going below that can you know 
remove you from a lot of companies on campus and having a good cgpa helps in the long run as well i mean there's no harm in having a wrong CG in a in having a good cgpa so make sure that you at least maintain it above 7.5 or at least above 7 because a lot of companies then you know set a gpa criteria and you don't want to not be able to sit an interview just because the gpa was low so yeah maintain your coding skills but also maintain your gpa at least above 7.5 and you should be absolutely good to go um next question is would you suggest college students go for higher studies after college or sit for placements in college um this is a very subjective question to a person because there's no right or wrong answer here if you are interested in research go for your masters go for your phd i for one wasn't interested in research i wanted to learn some hands-on skills i wanted to work for big mncs and get my hands dirty as soon as i could so i chose to not go for a master's degree and since i also got a good placement um in my mind it did not really make sense but yeah if you're a research person who wants to learn more about things like ml the ai uh, the whole stream of it bioinformatics whatever you should definitely go for your masters and you know learn those skills but yeah there's no right or wrong answer here you can always go for a placement you can go for your masters it just boils down to what you want to do and make sure you think about it actually that you know because masters is a big investment so just think about it whether you want to do it because you have an interest in it or just because everyone else is doing that so question yourself and you'll soon figure out that what you actually want to do in in both of them in both the cases um, the next question and the last question is at times there are a lot of tasks to be done quickly during those times how do you cope up with the stress and complete the work on time <laughs> my time management skills I'll be honest are subpar um, I do tend to perform really well under pressure which is more the reason why I tend to procrastinate and this always happens like you know just before the deadline I'm sitting and completing all my tasks but yeah i think in general i will not suggest you to do this have a, a timetable have proper work timings like make sure that if you're going to work sit and actually complete your work during that time frame have a proper timetable and understand that you know which hours are your most productive hours it can be in after 10 or 11 in the night or it can be early in the morning but just make sure that you don't waste those hours and you actually get your work done within those hours because yeah the less the hours you work the greater the efficiency you should be you should be aiming for that ratio you should not be sitting and spending hours and hours but re having a really bad efficiency so yeah time management is key i would say and the yeah, stress will always be there um some days it's okay and you know i don't really mind the stress in general either so yeah some days it will be there but yeah if it's happening too often go back and reflect that uh, was it you who caused this issue or like were it were your bad time management skills or yeah what was it so yeah i am done with the questionnaire and i hope i could answer some of your questions or the doubts that you had and um, make sure if you have any other doubts you can ping me on linkedin or instagram i'll have the credentials connected here and hoping to see you all uh, going to big height going to like reaching really big heights and um, probably coming even in google or doing your own startup so uh, all the best for your placement season and see you soon. Bye.